Coach, c congratulations on the book, and, and thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you, Bill. It's great to be on with you. Uh, kind of fitting for a book on teamwork to come out right around uh, the Super Bowl, and, and we've seen two great teams end up getting there. So it, it's going to be a fun uh, couple of weeks for sure. It, it really is. I hate to start with the officiating question, but I, I feel like it, it's got to be asked. I just wanted – you're a two-time – you won a, a Super Bowl as a, as a player and as a coach. You've been around the game a long time. What was your reaction to the officiating and what I think most of us agree is that blown call in that Saints game? No, and you see it time and time again in the fourth quarter of playoff games. Officials don't want to make the call to de decide the game. So this was a case, though, where it was absolutely obvious. This wasn't a close borderline call. It was an obvious pass interference that needed to be called. And it's just a shame because it's going to tank the whole Super Bowl. You're going to have people feeling like, well, the Rams shouldn't have been there anyway. If the Patriots win, they didn't beat the team that deserved to be there. You've got everybody in New Orleans upset. Uh, it's just really, really unfortunate. Uh, but it happens. It, it does, and I think we have to move past it. Coach, if the NFL asked your perspective, your advice on whether they should leave the, the rules, how they are, open up pass interference to replay, have some other approach, what, what would you suggest? Well, I'm not a replay person at all. When we first went down this road, when I was still coaching years ago, I said, you're going to open up Pandora's box. Uh, we all know that officiating, there is human error. If you try to correct some, and, and that, that was the point, well, let's just get the major calls. Let's get the big calls right. Where do you draw the line? And yes, you could correct that, that call in the game, and it was a big play, no question about it. But there were probably 10 other calls uh, during the course of, of the game that if they had been corrected, maybe they changed the flow of the game. I, I just don't think we want a six-hour game where we're looking at every single call and, and trying to get everything right. Uh, as much as it pains you when this happens, I, I think it, it's part of the game. So for the next 12 days, at least in the sports world, every eye is going to be on Atlanta. We're all heading there. The focus will be there. It'll be the epicenter of the, the sports world. For you, when you look back at your career, how is it different for a player approaching the next 12 days, like an Aaron Donald versus a head coach, as a man who's, who's been through that experience on, on both ends of the equation? Well, I know when I, I played in Super Bowl 13 and you're focused on your job and your assignment, what, what am I going to have to do? Who am I covering? What are the, the big plays that are going to be possible in my little realm of things? And then you want to take in everything. You want to take in all the events, everything that goes along with it and enjoy the journey. But you're really focused on getting yourself ready. As a coach, you're looking at uh, the entire team. What do I have to do to keep the environment right? Uh, how do I practice and make sure these guys are sharp, but I don't overwork them? How do I give them enough freedom and flexibility and leeway to enjoy Atlanta, enjoy the environment, enjoy the, the week? but not have them uh, lose focus. And you think about a lot of different things. And uh, it's, it's a stressful week on the coaches. I think the players enjoy it much, much more. Coach, for you, when you look back at, at your experiences, what is your favorite, your ultimate, that Super Bowl memory for you that is seared most happily in, in your memory? Well, I, I remember the first one that we won as a player, and it was so exciting uh, to know that you're on, on – top of the world you started out that summer with a goal and you were able to accomplish it uh, as a coach I think my favorite moment was after the game was over they're building the victory podium we're up there we're getting ready to do the post game uh, with Jim Nance and I was just looking out over the whole environment you say half the stadium is empty because the Bears fans have left and it's just Indianapolis fans and then our players and coaches and wives and families they're all on the field kind of celebrating hugging each other and the fans are there and you realize this was a victory not just for our organization but for the city of indianapolis the state of indiana the colts fans and all the families and you really do feel a sense of boy th this is something special that we've done for the the whole community you know, I am a Bears fan, and that's the first time I've ever heard that moment described in a way that made me feel joy. So. <laughs> no, it was, it was very, very special. And, and for me, of course, uh, you know, Lovey Smith on the other sideline, we worked together for five years in Tampa. I had so much respect for them. And just knowing that 
the two of us were there together. One of us was going to win. One of us was going to come in second. Uh, and it was such a, a monumental day for just African-American coaches, the city of Indianapolis. There, there were a lot of uh, kind of backstories in that one. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, as we look forward to this upcoming Super Bowl, Bill Belichick and his staff put together a scheme, at least in the first half, that did what felt like the impossible. They shut down Patrick Mahomes in the first half of that game. What do you think Belichick and his staff are going to do, need to do, to try to have similar success against a very good Rams offense? Well, that's the challenge of playing the Patriots. You can't look at the last game you played against them. You can't look at their last four games and say, this is what they're going to do. They're going to come out with a completely unique plan. And what we always told our teams, you have to weather that first quarter. We don't know what they're going to do. It's going to be unique. Then we'll figure it out. And then we've got to zero in on that. And uh, I thought Andy Reid and his team did a good job. They were flustered. They were overwhelmed in the first half. Second half, they played much better. But that's what Sean McVay is going to have to do. Hey, how are we going to get through those first 10 minutes, 12 minutes when we're not quite sure? Are they going to blitz us? Are they going to be 3-4? Are they going to play nickel defense? How are they going to play us? And then offensively, what's it going to be New England's package? Is it going to be hurry up, receivers throwing the ball quick? Is it going to be trying to slow the game down and run it? Uh, um, and, and so it's, it's going to be a game of adjustments uh, as the game goes along. Yeah, and, and you hit on that. We saw Sony Michelle, who's been spectacular in this postseason, particularly, I mean, not even for a rookie. He is a rookie, but he's just been spectacular. Gronk looked unguardable at times in that game. But we all know what Tom Brady's about. If you're the Rams defensive coaching staff, what is the game plan you're trying to put together for the first part of the game? You know, I've worked with Rodney Harrison for 10 years on uh, NBC's Football Night in America, and Rodney has always told me the way you have to play the Patriots is you have to pressure up inside, you have to be able to get pressure without blitzing, and you have to be able to play man-to-man -man coverage to take away the quick, easy, fast throw. Well, that is what the Rams defense is built around pressure inside with Aaron Donald and Dominican Sue. They play man coverage. They're built for it. Now, what are the adjustments uh, New England's going to make? Who are the matchups that they're going to favor? Is it going to be Gronk on a safety man? Is it going to be James White on the linebackers? New Orleans had a lot of success with Alvin Kamara on uh, the Rams linebackers. And, um, you know, New England will have the same opportunity. So, it's going to be that, but I think the Rams' defense is really built to play against the Patriots' offense. Coach, the four quarterbacks that were remaining entering this past weekend, you've got two in, in Breeze and Brady who, whenever they step away from the game, not just Hall of Famers, but will be regarded as highly as many of the guys who have played that position. Patrick Mahomes has celebrated a young player maybe we've ever seen. Golf's kind of interesting. He has been criticized. He has been praised. There's a difference of opinion about him out in the sort of sports talk, media, fan world. When you look at Jared Goff in this moment, in this game, what's your confidence level in him at the quarterback position? Uh, he's going to be the wild card to me. Uh, he's played very well throughout the season. In some of the biggest moments, he didn't play that well. Their game in Chicago that they lost, uh, it was cold weather, and he didn't play well. The beginning of this championship game, he didn't play great. He got it going and made some key throws down the stretch. But that's going to be what people are talking about. Can Jared Goff match Tom Brady? We know Tom Brady's going to make great throws and big plays in the big moments. In the huge moment that they need in that fourth quarter drive, when if they're down three points, will Jared Goff be able to make the plays that they need? All right, the, the way too early, and the first of many questions toward you, the way too early Super Bowl prediction. At, I know it's early, <laughs> but at this point, who do you think has the edge? I just like the Patriots and their experience in big games. Uh, I think they will have a little different game plan they'll throw at them. Um, I, you know, it's hard to beat a Bill Belichick team when they have two weeks to prepare. Uh, they're going to need a monumental effort from a couple of key individuals. I, I think Coach Belichick always takes away your number one weapon. So I would look at him really throwing a net around Aaron Donald. Uh, so that means in Dominican Sue, if they're going to win, I think he has to have a monster game. And then the same thing offensively. He'll do what it takes to slow down Todd Gurley, 
he'll, he's had Brandon Cooks on his team. He knows what Cooks can do. I think he'll take him away. I think it's up to the other players uh, to really step up. Robert Woods, maybe C.J. Anderson, maybe some of the, the tight ends. But the other offensive weapons are going to have to step up. And then Indomitian Sue, Dante Fowler, some of those other rush men are going to have to have big games because I, I don't see Aaron Donald getting single blocked a whole lot in this one. Coach, last question for you. I'm having the pleasure to visit with you from my office in Brooklyn. I'm surrounded by books. The I'm the guy that puts his books in alphabetical order by author. So the D's are right here. I'll have I'll have I'll have the soul of a team here very soon. What what can you tell us about the book and, and why this was something you wanted to dedicate some of your time toward? Yeah, I've been asked by so many people over the last 10 years since I stopped coaching. Tell us about building a team. Tell us about creating a championship unit. Tell us about fostering teamwork. And I give a lot of those speeches, so I thought I would put it together in, in book form, talk about the principles uh, of building a, a cohesive unit, a strong group, whether it's a football team, whether it's a business, whether it's a family, any organization, how do you get people to come together and function at their best as a group? And I, I think people are going to enjoy some of the principles in this book. Coach, really enjoyed the conversation. I'll try to say hello to you in Atlanta. Thank you so much for, for making time for us. Looking forward to it. Thank you, and uh, God bless.